If we want to do addition with binary numbers, we do it very similar to the case we have with the normal numbers. So let us, for example, say that we want to add 45 and 28. What we do, we first add the numbers in the column for the ones, which is three ones and one tenths, and we add the 10 to our column for the tenths, and then here we sum this to 73. For binary numbers, we do it basically in the same way. So here we want to add 45 in base 10, and we want to add it with 28 in base 10. So this can be written as 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1 in base 2, which is 48, plus 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0 in base 2. And now when we add these numbers, we write it as 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, plus 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. Adding this for the first column, which is worth 1, we have 1. Then we take the next column, we will have 0. We take the next column, this will be 2. So this will be 0 in this column and 1 in this column. And 1 plus 1 plus 1 will be 1 with 1 in the next column. And here we have 0 with a 1. And then we have 0 and then a 1 that will give us this number here. So this number here, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1 in base 2 will be equal to 73 in base 10. So what we do in the general case is that we add two numbers and then we get a carry that follows to our next addition. So if we consider a bit level i in an addition of the two vectors x and y, then we add the carry from the previous bit level ci with xi and yi. So this sum is given in two bits. So the answer at the level where we are operating is SI, and then we have a carry to the next level, which we call CI plus one. So if we write this, what we do is that we sum XI and YI, and we have from the previous summation here, we will have potentially a carry that we call CI, and then when we sum these three, we will get our sum SI and we will have a carry to the next level, which is CI plus one. So what we have here are three inputs. And we have here two outputs from our component that is going to realize this. And this component we're going to call a full adder. So let us try to realize this full adder. So what we want to do is to write the truth table for this adder. So what we had was three inputs that we call xi, yi and ci. And then we had two outputs, one that we call ci plus one and one that we called SI. So enumerating the different inputs that we have in our truth table will give us the following. So we have eight different inputs, exactly these eight. So first looking at our carry bit, when will we have a carry as an output? Well, we will have it when we have at least two inputs that are one. So we have it in this case, we have it in this case, this case, and in this case. And in the other cases, we do not have the carry. And then looking at the sum, when is the sum one? Well, it will be one when we have one or three inputs that are one. So we will have a one in these four different cases. And for the rest, we will have a zero. So this is the truth table for our full adder. 
and then we can write the expressions for our out outputs. So let us start with SI. And here we can see that SI is a 1 when we had an odd number of inputs. So this can simply be written as the XOR of our three inputs. So XI, XOR, YI, XOR, CI. And for the carry bit, CI plus 1, we will write this in a little bit unconventional way, but in the way that we typically write it for the full adder. So let us start by looking at these two ones that we had here in the last two rows. This will be equal to 1 when XI and YI are 1. And XI and YI are not 1 in any other place. So we can write CI plus 1 equals XI, YI. And for the other two ones that we have here in the truth table, we look at these two rows here. And here we can see that in this case we will have a 1 if we have the case that we have CI equals 1 and also if XI and YI XOR to 1. So here we can write this as XI XOR YI. So this is how we can realize our full adder. So here we have our two expressions and here we have the realization of the full adder. So we can see here that we have three inputs XI, YI and CI. Our SI here, our sum, is the XOR of the three inputs. So we have XI here, YI here, which goes into an XOR and then this will go into a new XOR with the input CI. So here we have the realization of this expression. For CI plus 1, for this output, we have first an AND of XI and YI. So this is this AND that we have here. This will go into an OR, which is this OR, and it will go into this OR together with the XOR here of YI and XI which will go into an AND with the CI. So it is this AND here is this AND and this XOR here is the XOR that we are using here. And this will go into our other OR function. And now in order to add n bit numbers, we can just make a cascade of these full adders. So in this case, in this example, we have the addition of two 4 bit numbers where we use a cascade of four full adders. So we have first the input carry, which we need because we need to define our different inputs. This will be zero to our first addition of the least significant bits. And here we add the bits x0 and y0, we get the sum and we get the carry. And this carry will go on to the addition of our next two bits, xi and yi, which will give us the sum s1 and also the carry C2, which will in turn be an input to the addition of the next two bit, and so on. And then what we have as an output in the last full adder is the carry bit C4 together with the sum S3. A situation here that we need to handle is that of overflow. So suppose that we use n bit representation of our numbers, then our numbers x, y and s can be in z 2 to the n, which means that we have the different numbers 0, 1 and up to 2 to the n minus 1. Now if the sum of the two numbers is too large, it means that we have the final carry bit equals to 1, and this carry bit we denote c n. So for this reason, we, we split our result in two parts. So one part is the sum that we call S, which is our remainder when we divide X plus Y with 2 to the N. And the other part we're going to call overflow or shortened as OV. And this will be the same as the last carry bit that we call CN. 
So if our last carry bit is zero, we do not have an overflow. And if it is one, we do have an overflow, which means that we have a sum that is a number that is outside this range that we defined here.